Hey, hi friends. So battery and powertrain investor day is coming. Most people forget it's a powertrain day too. So I'm just reminding you, like how I explained in this video on how fast horses transit to ice engines, this day will seal the day of the end of an era for internal combustion engines, also known as ICE. As an investor, there are two things that an outside investor should look at. I think it's three or four, but Elon Musk said two. I'll let Elon Musk explain this to you himself. If I were an outside investor, I would really focus on, on two things. Uh, what is the timeline to full self-driving? And wh what is your plan to scale and uh, battery production and, and, and get the cost per kilowatt hour lower. Those, those are basically battery cells and full self-driving. Those are the two strategic things that are of most importance. So Battery and Power Train Investor Day is a day that will blow everybody's mind because it's a milestone that will set the standard so high, leaving everyone else in the dust by a far margin. I mean, there is already a big gap but this gap is going to be as big as Mark Spaghetti's and David Einhorn's ego. So in this video, I will cover the obvious stuff that will happen during Battery Investor Day and I'll talk about the stuff that, that is not too obvious. It is funny when I tell my friends that Tesla will 30x their production capacity and they all give me like the what the fuck look. You know, I hope you understand that scaling is one of the hardest and in fact the hardest thing to do in any business. Being the biggest battery maker in the world and they want to like 30 exit. It sounds crazy but let's discuss about this. I've been working really hard on this video for the past three days and this video was supposed to be out yesterday. Sorry for being like one day late. You see, I really respect your time and I won't release a video for the sake of releasing it. And I really hope you like it, appreciate the early thumbs up. Thank you so much. First, let's have a fast recap on the current technologies and thereafter we'll cover the obvious that will happen during Battery Investor Day. This is Tesla's current battery technology. Inside a battery, there's an anode, cathode and a separator. Why do we need a separator? It's because when the anode and cathode come together, kaboom, okay? So we need a separator. So within all batteries of like any uh, battery maker, we are talking about any brands out there, uh, the anode usually consists of graphite. There are research looking into silicon, but let's not go into there yet. I really don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, let's look at cathode. So cathode consists of mainly nickel, aluminium, and cobalt. If it's the Tesla power wall, this will be changed to manganese, but let's not discuss about that yet. 80% nickel, 15% aluminium, and 3% cobalt. You realize this doesn't add up to 100% is because Elon Musk tweeted it's going to be less than 3%. There are a lot of numbers out there and some say nickel may be 88%. I cannot confirm the number, so let's just stick this number as it is. Currently, Tesla's battery technology can go 1000 cycles. So 1,000 cycles will bring 250,000 miles and it has a battery density of about 247 and it costs above 100 kilowatt hour. So let's go into the obvious of what is going to happen during Battery Investor Day. I compiled everything from everywhere I saw. So this is the obvious. So Tesla will definitely have the million mile battery. This is like no questions asked. They will hit the million mile battery. So how is this going to be achieved. So looking at this document uh, release, if you look down here, you, you can see that these are called charge cycles. You see that the battery can go on 4,000 uh, cycles without much battery degradation. It means after 4,000 cycles and that is like 10 over years to 15 years of operation and it still maintains a capacity of above 90%. This is like mind blowing. So it is done and I believe during Battery Investor Day, they will release the information on how they exactly going to do this. And it's also going to be super obvious that they're going to be less than 100 kilowatts per hour because Elon Musk mentioned many, many times that for electric vehicles to be competitive with uh, traditional ICE cars, 100 kilowatts is the number. So far, there are some confirmation that Tesla can go below 100 already, but for the MMC packs, they are close to 100. So I believe on uh, Battery Investor Day, it's going to be less than $100. So the next obvious thing is that they want to go to 1 terawatt hour. So they want to 30x because currently they are producing like 30 gigawatt hour. How do you achieve like 30x production? This one, they will do it, but I will cover later like how are they going to achieve it. The next super obvious is the acquisition of Maxwell and Haiba. 
what does Maxwell do? They do dry electrode. So currently all battery production uses wet electrode. So what does it mean? So let's say for example, this is a piece of electrode and they will need to coat it with, it's wet. And they need to go through a big drying oven to dry both sides and it takes a long process. So imagine you just straight away put a dry coating on it. So when you have dry electrode technology, instead of an oven, all you need to do is just apply, done. So the next obvious thing is that the battery density has to go up. How much above? I got a hint that it's going to be above 300. We'll cover that later. Tesla filed a patent and let's talk a little bit about this. So this is the top view of a battery. So when you look at the top view down, this is how it looks like. It looks like some kind of spring roll, right? So these are the many layers of anode, cathode and separator. This is the side view of a battery, many layers of anode and cathode. So they all roll up looking like a toilet paper roll. So now let's take a look at this slide. If I'm going to flatten the entire battery, so I unroll the entire toilet paper and I unroll it, it looks something like this. So currently when you discharge power, the electrons will just escape through this tap out to the car. So many electrons will escape through this tap. It will come from the furthest end and it will escape. The thing is, through many charge cycles, that means charge and discharge, it will, it will look something like this. So there will be many of these electrons all over the whole place and you will just keep going you will form this like line because this is the shortest route out. Anyway, I'd like to thank uh, Limiting Factor for coming out a video on how to explain this pattern a lot better. So I'll link his channel in the description below. So anyway, so the this, this tabless technology, it looks something like this. So when your entire tab is like entire row upwards, so let's say the electrons need to escape, you can just go a direct route upwards. So how does this help the battery a lot? So number one, there'll be less heat because the, bat the electron doesn't need to travel this way out, which creating a lot of heat is just out and in. It is very, very fast. And because of that, less heat and probably uh, cooling gets a lot better. So there, there is so much advantages to this tabless technology. Let's talk about V2G. So with the million mile battery, this is going to help a lot. Well, what is V2G? Basically connecting your vehicle to the grid and with all the vehicles combined collect, connected to the grid, it can power the grid. So I'm going to do a super rough calculation. My whole point is to just let you understand that V2G can turn your car into an asset, a money-making asset. So for example, there are different times of the day where energy cost is different. So during peak hour, it may cost a different amount. During off peak, it may cost a different amount. So this may be the difference in charges. So if you take the difference in these two, roughly 200 kilowatts uh, hour uh, is about $70. So that means let's say you charge your car during off peak and you take the energy and you feed the grid during peak hour. So you will roughly get $70 for 200 kilowatts. So over the month, and I'm just saying over the month, you do that every day or maybe every alternate day, over the month, your profits will be about $300 per month. So through the lifespan of the entire car, which is gonna be probably more than 10 years with this uh, million mile battery, you take $300 and you times by 10 years, that is like thirty dollars to $40,000. This is a lot of money. So let's say, for example, with this vehicle to grid technology, let's say your car, uh, you bought it at $50,000. Your car within the next 10 years can make you back $50,000. So your car essentially is free. This is freaking mind blowing. And I think this is going to blow everybody's mind. I'm just doing a rough calculation, but it is going to be so freaking amazing. So the last obvious thing I'll talk about is Tesla's plate powertrain. The plate powertrain, it was uh, tested in the Nürburgring last year. Uh, the lap time was crazy and Elon Musk mentioned during the conference call it's like alien technology. I When he says alien technology, huh, you, you know it means quite a lot. I tried to search more online what can I get out of it. I can't find anything at all. So this is something I'm really looking forward for Battery Investor Day. So let's talk about what we do not know. How much below 100 kilowatts? I do not know but I'll show you a chart. So this is battery prices and it's been like 1000 plus dollars in uh, per kilowatt hour in 2010. So now it has gotten way, in 2020 it's got 100 plus. I, Tesla is definitely below the 100 mark. We do not know how much. So maybe these are every other people and Tesla is like way below 100. What we do not know is how much battery degradation there will be. So we do not know exactly how much battery degradation but we know it's going to be around the 4000 mark or above. Density wise, so the proof of concept has been done. It's been demonstrated above 300 uh, watt hour per kilograms. So I foresee this could be above 300. How much above? I am not very sure. How is Tesla going to achieve 30x production? This is the biggest question I have and many people have because when you look at the materials of Tesla's battery, 
there is more than enough aluminium. Uh, cobalt, uh, Elon Musk said that he is going to get rid of cobalt um, because of many ethical issues. So next one, we have the question mark left is there's not enough nickel production in the world and there's not enough graphite in the world. So how are they going to solve for these two? So if you look at how Elon Musk has been always thinking, he goes by the first principle approach. He goes, he strips everything away and asks the most simple fundamental question. So to 30x, he needs how much nickel and how much graphite. Let me play you a clip. I mean, as you just said, you know, we, we basically did the, the quick math and looked at, okay, we're going to build, you know, so many hundred thousand cars per year and this many kilowatt hours per car, you know, therefore, therefore, you know, 35 gigawatt hours of, of cells per year. Well, that's a huge number and it was actually more than the entire world was producing for all applications, cell phones, computers, cars, everything. So that is a crazy amount of batteries needed and there's not enough materials available. I'll show you some of the research I've done. So this is the amount of, um, nickel produced all over the whole world combined. It gen generally, it's quite well spread out and I believe it is easy to scale this up. There is a plan on going to mining. If you look at Tesla, apparently together with uh, LG Chem, uh, CATL, uh, Damien and Volkswagen, they are actually going to form a consortium and going to probably go into mining in Indonesia for nickel. So nickel, I'm not really worried. So what I'm really worried about, and this is the one that kept me going down this, this deep rabbit hole because I show you the numbers now. See, China produces most of the graphite in the world. And I'm like, oh, holy shit. Because it, you think about, remember the oil days where countries, if they have control of one resource, they actually can do a lot of shit to threaten the world. Just like, remember what happened in the Middle East? They can literally screw the world over. So when I saw this, like, oh shit. So uh, what happened was that I, I went deeper. So I checked all the available like natural reserves that maybe we could actually start the exploration. If you look at all this, these are the red, don't look at the red diamonds. These are things that we don't need. These are lousy graphite. What we are looking for is the green one here. So some in Mexico, but you look at the whole world map, all of them are located in China. I'm like, holy shit. So further looking into this, I'm not worried anymore because there are people making artificial graphite now. And if the time comes and it's needed, people are scaling on artificial graphite. So ah, not worried anymore. Will Tesla go into mining? You see Tesla, as far as I know, they are one of the most vertically integrated companies. So they do everything themselves. I believe they'll go into mining because they want full control. So we cannot, they cannot have a time where let's say the Donald Trump pissed China off and one day China pissed Donald Trump off and they not no more trade. The world is screwed. Okay, if that really happens, Tesla will not will be the least screwed because there's a lot more other companies more dependent on China. So all these companies are going to die first. Uh, Tesla will be the last one to die because they are the most vertically integrated. So just saying. So will they go into mining? My answer is uh, probably yes because Elon kind of like hinted that before. Um, and, and then as we, as we scale battery production, to very high levels, we actually have to look further down the supply chain, um, and um, we, we, we might get into the mining business. I don't know, <laughs> maybe uh, yeah, a little bit at least. So the last thing I'll talk about is recycling because recycling. Elon Musk mentioned that because you see in the battery cell, all the minerals are there, so all they need to do is just extract it and do new ones again. It's a lot cheaper than going to the mine itself. So I believe JB Schraubel is working on this. He left like Tesla one or two years ago. So he's at Redwood. I couldn't find any more materials on this, but I believe very strongly that he will come doing battery investor day and talk about the recycling of materials. So concluding this video, if Tesla pulls this off, it's going to be epic and it's going to be the end of ice engines. It's going to be end of an era of shitty air, end of like using dinosaur fuel, and it's going to be a really good future. I want you to imagine like five to 10 years down the road, Tesla hits a battery density of like 400 watt hour per kilograms. That is the disruption zone for battery technology to go into aircraft. So we live in a very disruptive era and being invested in Tesla is like one of the best ways to take part in this disruption. Anyways, appreciate those who helped me the thumbs up. Thanks for being awesome and hope all my work has given you better insights. And as always, invest safe.